You're watching Five Live Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. And welcome back to our first show of 2009. We're talking about the film industry locally in these uh, difficult times. Uh, Bill, you mentioned a, a new facility that's under construction mm -hmm. at Screen Gems. Um, you broke ground September 25th yes. on a new stage. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Well, we're quite proud of this. A couple of years of research went into it. And it, it, you can't sustain a business based on incentives, and we understand that. We have to build a be better mousetrap. And we're building a stage that's 37,500 square feet. Hold on. 37. Uh, I'm, I'm letting that compute with our viewers <laughs> who are thinking about the size of the square footage of their house. 37,500 7, square feet. Right. 150 by 250. And 40 feet up. Clear span, no columns. So you can build a lot in, inside of that. Our viewers are looking at uh, some of the renderings right now, actually, on, on, sc on screen. It has another amazing uh, component to it. Mm -hmm. And that's it's, the tank. It's got a tank, as in a huge... Water tank. Aquarium. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's built, uh, it's dug out underneath the, the level uh, floor of the stage, uh, down six feet, but also has it walls that expand it and bring it up uh, another four feet. So it'll be a, a, a five, five feet. So you'll be able to have a, a 10 foot uh, uh, tank. And obviously it's to shoot underwater sequences. Yes. Yeah. We did this for surface when surface was here uh, in a much smaller tank and expanded it uh, uh, to accommodate them to do only one episode, which was a rescue scene, which was quite amazing. And um, we get calls all the time because of the smaller tank. There's, there's a great interest in it, but when they find out the size of it, they, they pass on us. So it's doing just not large research, enough for their purposes. Right, and the new tank will be. It's not only a large tank, it has like, it's like the, in the known universe or something, it has some designation, it's the largest tank, what? Well, I say it's the third largest in, in North America, right. but the, the, the one on the Universal lot and the one on the Warner Brothers lot are reserved for use by those studios, so, so you can't get on there. But I think Johnny's done some further research and... It's, yeah, I think it, you know, it's third or fourth largest uh, in the world probably. There's only a few places in the world that exist to, to do that, and they're well known. We, we had a meeting a couple of months ago with a company back in California, and they were doing research for a water-based project. Um, and they had researched, the, there's a tank in Baja, Mexico, there's one in Malta, uh, there's one or two in Los Angeles. I mean, they had a book of all of their research, and as soon as we mentioned a tank... And the soundstage is one of the largest yes. available. Right, right, and we're seeing more and more film being shot and projects being shot up against green screen. So they will create the background afterwards in a computer. So the, the, the fact that you can do these water scenes and then create a larger ocean or the background or the waves later uh, makes this quite a valuable Is property. this the third largest movie soundstage in the world? I think I read that somewhere. It's the third in the United States. In the United States. Not bad. You, <laughs> you expect it to bring a lot of business? Is that the our, our research says it, it will, but everything is cyclical. You could put this up and have a grand opening and a project that's in there for six months and you just have to keep scrambling for the next piece of business. When do you think it'll be available? May. May. Uh, and does, we're on schedule. And you're on schedule. Does that elevate our potential to a whole other level here? I certainly think so. Uh, people are looking for stages of this particular size to do certain types of projects and there's only, again, so many in the world. Uh, and so for us to be in the same market now um, as Los Angeles, as London, as Toronto, uh, because we have a special unique asset that nobody else has, then that, that puts us in consideration for projects that we wouldn't normally get considered for. How about projects that are not being done here but demand our services or our crews? How far away are we mobile? Do we, can we send things, equipment, crews? How far away? We send people to, to New Mexico. Uh, we have people going to Michigan, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Uh, Wilmington is known as a, as a resource where you can find uh, assets in the industry. So even though we have productions that are not shooting here, we have productions coming here to get the resources that they need. 
And the studio, about five years ago, made a decision to invest heavily in the equipment business, the, the lighting business. And we send equipment up and down the East Coast we as do. far north as Boston, Michigan, Florida, Atlanta. And uh, last year, we did open up a, uh, a, a business in, in Charleston, South Carolina. Is that good revenue for the studio? It's good to be able, if we don't have business here, you right. can put the equipment on a pallet and ship it somewhere. And so the idea was have it for Wilmington. Wilmington is the first priority, but where else can we make uh, use of the assets? TV uh, series business has been very good in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. uh, Dawson's Creek, then One Tree Hill, anything new? Not right now. It's, we're starting to get into that time of year when uh, pilots are made. Uh, and so we're starting to have some contact with companies, seeing if there are any potential pilots that we could be in the running for, which then could lead to a new series. We, because of those two series, do we have a good reputation? We do. For Within some. the industry, Wilmington is, is well known as a place where television can be produced, and, and we love television series. How the, top, the top two producers of television really speak very highly of us, and that's being uh, Disney ABC Touchstone and Warner Brothers, which produces One Tree Hill. How important is quality of life as a, as a selling point here? It's, it's good. I would say it's yeah. not, um, when you have someone that's coming for a few months, um, it, it's not like a company that's relocating here and moving in CEOs and key staff that is, this is now going to be their permanent home. We're dealing with people coming here on a temporary basis. But they enjoy the fact that it is a great community for them to live in, spend time here. The actors come here and talk about the fact that they can walk down the street, they can go and sit in restaurants, they're not bothered by people. Uh, and so it certainly does mean a lot to them, and, and they will leave here and then spread that goodwill and let people know that it was a great place. They didn't know anything before they came here. They didn't know what to expect of Wilmington, North Carolina, but given the right project, they certainly look forward to coming back here again. Any, and, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, a good portion of them, once they get to town and find out that Wrightsville Beach exists, that's where they want to stay. How important is the independent film production business? I think the way that we look at independent film is these are the filmmakers of the future. So we're investing in, in these people. We're investing in the actors, the, the crew people, the writers, the directors, uh, and, and we want to be able to accommodate them as best as possible. And, and we've done that in the last couple of years with some good size independents and some smaller independents because we want to win them over as customers, repeat customers. You know, uh, I, I was thinking as, as a uh, a young man, I, you, you heard about the studio system and the, the, the studios. Uh, it's, a, it's a different world today. Mm -hmm. When you talk about screen, EUE Screen Gem Studio and what the Warner Brothers Studio and, mm -hmm. and Paramount were like, it, it, make the differentiation for our well, viewers. Well, EUE Screen Gems, we don't produce product. We are, the best analogy, and it's the only analogy I have, is we're like a hotel to a production. You come in, we take care of your offices, your internet, uh, your equipment, your stages, your parking spaces, uh, and, and we give you a, a very comfortable place to work. As Johnny said, you can call on a Friday and be, we, we can have the place ready for you on Monday to, to, to move into. Uh, and any big films uh, on the horizon? Any films on the horizon? I know with, uh, with the SEG issue looming, it's difficult right now. Sure. We don't have anything that, that is, is seriously looking at us right now. We've always got scripts coming in, and we've always got people that we're talking to. Uh, and lucky for us, because of the reputation of the region, there's always people that are considering the region that we don't necessarily know. Um, and we may get a phone call and find out that we've already made the short list, uh, and we didn't even know we were in the running for production. So you know, our job is to, to constantly promote what we have, uh, and hopefully somebody out there is paying attention, and um, we'll get some benefits from it. Is the studio still doing tours? Yes. Yeah. Is there interest? There's a tremendous amount of interest, yeah. which we love. It's, it's, it's like the, the community is so proud of what's here. They have friends come in from out of town, and have, that's where they bring them. We're going to have to leave it there. We're at, out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to tune in next week for more of the people and the issues that are the fabric of the Lower Cape Fear. Happy New Year. I'm Donnie Itzel. You've been watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Join us every Sunday morning at 11 as we explore the issues that concern you.